I just, I love hamburgers. They are, my wife gets mad at me because every time we go to the restaurant, I pretty much always get a hamburger. Doesn't really matter the restaurant. Uh, if there's a hamburger on the menu, I get it and they're just, they're delicious and they're a, a good ham. There's not much that beats a good hamburger. But we're not here to talk about that type of hamburger. We're here to talk about hamburger, hamburger menus, hamburger, those, those three line things that you click on, it opens the, the navigation. Sometimes they're on mobile sites, usually it's on mobile, sometimes it's on the not mobile version too. I'm not here to debate the, the use of them and if they're overused or anything like that. We're not here for that. We're here because, just like I, I, I love real hamburgers, and I love, you know, for something that's so simple, there's just such a variety of hamburgers. You can get every hamburger is completely different. Every restaurant you go to, they're completely different. And then, for the most part, it's the same on websites. Sometimes when I go to a restaurant, I get a hamburger and I'm sorely disappointed by it. And sometimes you go to this really awesome website and you click the little hamburger icon, you're hoping something fun's gonna happen and it lets you down. Ugh, that always sucks. But a lot of the time, there's these cool little animations and fun things that people put into them and that's what we're here to explore. But we're not only gonna explore them, I'm gonna challenge you to do something really fun with it too. I'm gonna to get to that at the end of the video. We're gonna be long, we're gonna be starting this one off. I'm gonna be talking a little bit about the hamburger thing, how we can set one up, how we can create one that we can manipulate and play around with. And at the end, I'm gonna be issuing you a challenge, but we'll get to that at the end. For now, let's let's jump into how we can just set one up. All right, so the very first thing I wanna take a look at before we really get into the, the meat and potatoes of all of this, um, as you can see, I have a little hamburger icon that's there right now, and if I click on it, you can see that we're, we're dragging in and out here, and you can obviously tell I use the little, like a hamburger, and you can see it right here, and it's, you know, it's like a little emoji, a little hamburger emoji, and, uh, what a lot of people don't know is there's actually a Unicode character that we can use for the for a hamburger menu. So if you don't need something animated, you could use this. And it's actually, um, here's a nice little blog post. I'll link to this in the description down below. Um, it's actually the three-line navigation menu icon. Um, it's really the trigram for heaven. Uh, it's a Chinese glyph, but you can use that glyph just like you can my hamburger glyph right here. Um, and just like that, you can use the HTML entity, but you can just literally paste it in and play with your font size and you have a little hamburger menu there. And um, I don't think it looks amazing, but it can, uh, playing with the font size, doing a little bit with it, it can work perfectly fine for your website. So that is an option if you want to and you don't need something that's animated because you're gonna see it does take a little bit of work to actually create a hamburger that we can do something with. But that's cool because as I said at the beginning, a large part of what we do, it's all about, you know, adding these little details and adding these fun little things to our website. So let's see the basics of how we can set this up. Um, so we can see here in my HTML, I, I have a nav. I've put my button in here. Usually in my button, I include in the header and not necessarily in the nav, but um, I did it like this just for simplicity's sake for this for now. Um, I have a navigation there with a whole bunch of links in it and then just my regular content there. I'm not uh, for the JavaScript itself, I'm just adding the nav open class to my body or I'm toggling it on and off when I click on that. And I have a little bit of CSS that's causing that to open and close, which we'll look at in a second. Um, I'm not gonna go through all of the CSS uh, that I've done here, but basically just when I add that nav open, I'm doing a transform on that. So if we go and look all the way up here, uh, my nav has a translate X on it of 100%. So that's moving it off the screen. And then when I click, it's putting that to zero, so it's moving back into its normal position. So that's basically how I have that working right now. Now to get the hamburger itself working, uh, let's come right to here. And let's add some hamburger styles. So um, if we come and look at my nav toggle, I have a span class, and we can get rid of my little icon there. Um, we have a span class of hamburger, and that's where we're going to be doing a lot of the work. So we have dot hamburger. And actually on this, I'm gonna just do a display of block because we need to set a size on it. And right now it's a span, which is display inline. And I wanna do a position of relative because we're going to be using pseudo elements on this uh, and with absolute positioning. So that just makes sure everything sticks together in one place. Now, one thing that's also really important here is um, you'll see other times where you have three spans. So you're using one for each line just to keep simplicity sake, it's already, I don't really like even having um, a line of HTML here that's not actually adding content to my site. So doing it three times to me is a bit of overkill. So we can do everything here we need with just our hamburger and then a couple of pseudo elements. And because our pseudo elements are going to have um, a lot of similar styles, 
to our actual hamburger, let's put them all together. So we have our before and my hamburger after. Uh, because on here, let's give them all the same width. We're gonna give them all the same height. We're gonna give them all the same color. Um, var, I have some CSS custom properties here for my colors. I only have three, I have my gray, which is uh, a neutral, my primary and a dark for that and a light for the white background. Um, so there you go, you can see already there's a line coming up. It's starting to come together. And on this, I'm also gonna put a transition of transform 250 milliseconds ease in out um, just because we're going to be doing some transforms and stuff as the menu opens and closes and we want to be able to see what's happening with those um, you know we want it to be animated and not just clicking as soon as it happens we could always play with that timing if you really want to uh, the next thing is we need just my before and after because we need to do a little bit of extra stuff on our suit elements to actually get them to show up the first thing is giving it the content property. If you don't know a lot about pseudo elements or you haven't used them before, uh, I have a little mini series that um, I have on those that can help you understand them a little bit better. Uh, I'm gonna give those the position of absolute, like I said I would, which is why I put the position of relative here. And then I'm also going to give them, uh, It's they're showing up now, if we go and look, the line is looking a lot longer than it did before. So I'm also gonna give them a left of zero, just to make sure that they're all lining up on the left. And they're all there now, they're just overlapping each other, so we can't see them. So to help out on that, let's just grab our before. And on this before, I'm gonna give that a bottom of six pixels. And then we can do my hamburger, after and give that a top of six pixels. And just like that, we can see that my menu is coming all together. So now it looks like a nice little hamburger icon. So I did six pixels because we have a height of three pixels on them. So the height of three pixels, um, by giving it a bottom of six, it's pushing it six upward and then top is pushing it six downward. Um, so we're getting like, a, you know, our, our width is three pixels. Then we have three pixels of empty space. Um, is how that's all working. So we could just leave it there. We could, you know, it'd be very, I think that works out really nicely. But where are things, we're gonna get a bit more interesting. This is where I want you to take this. I'm gonna look at a really basic example of something we can do, and then I want you to go crazy with it. So I'm doing change this stuff below here. Uh, and again, I'll be talking more about sort of the ground rules of everything uh, near the end of this video. So if you do want to participate, make sure you listen to the end where I'm going to be going over the rules of what you can change and what you can't change in this file. Um, so on, uh, we don't need our nav, <laughs> we already have that one. On my hamburger itself, uh, one thing we could do is we could do a transform rotate 45 degrees. So now when it's opened, it's gonna be rotated. And when we close it, it on rotates itself. And that might seem a little bit silly at first, but the reason that is good is now nav open uh, hamburger. I'm gonna do the after for now. And we're gonna say transform rotate 90 degrees. And that's going to turn it Oh, I had an extra dot here. There we go. Um, so you can see that what that's doing there. If you look at the hamburger, I'm gonna uncomment that or comment it out and then put it back on. So you can see it's turning that 90 degrees. Let's also come in here and just grab that. But we wanna take our before and we'll change that to an opacity of zero just so we don't see it. So there we go. So you can see that it is working. The only problem is it's making a really awkward type of X. So on my transform here, I'm gonna add a second one, which is gonna be a trans form, uh, transform, translate of, is it six or negative six? I never remember. It would be negative six. Six is pushing it too far the other way. And there we go, we get a nice X there. So when it's there, we get our hamburger, then they're animating and crossing. Um, I think what I'm actually gonna do here, I did my transform, let's slow that down a little bit. And I'm also going to do one for my opacity of like 200 milliseconds linear because the way it was disappearing was really bothering me. So now it should at least fade out, which should be a little bit um, 
less annoying <laughs> in how it's working. So there we go. I think that's looking a little bit better. It's not looking fantastic. There's a lot of other cool things we can do with that, but that's what I want to see you do. I want to see what you can come up with here to make a really interesting little hamburger animation for when this opens and closes. So the basic rules of how this is going to work are you're not allowed to touch the HTML. The HTML is 100% off limits. You are not allowed to go in there and do anything to it. If you need to go into the JavaScript and play around with it, I'll allow it. I don't really want to see a lot of manipulation through JavaScript, but if you have some really cool idea that requires it, by all means, go for it. Um, but the main thing will be playing with these. If you want to change other CSS, you want to change a little bit of what the menu looks like, you need to change some of the values on other things here, you can definitely make modifications to the rest of it. But where the main stuff is going to happen is modifying the values and the different things that I'm doing here to change how things are happening when the menu is opening and closing. So that's why I did it this far. I want to set the base for you. And now it's your job to come up with something fun, something cool. So and by limiting you to a little bit like that, um, we want to, you know, so I want to limit you a little bit on how far you can go with it, because I do think that makes it a little bit more interesting to see how creative you can get and some of the fun things you can still do with that limitation. All right, so there you have it. There you have everything you need to know for the challenge. So all you need to do is hit the little fork button in CodePen and start making something cool. Go look for inspiration. Go find some cool stuff that's out there and see if you can do something fun and exciting, unexpected maybe. Um, if there's a ton of submissions and a lot of them are the same, I might not feature every single one of them or I might group them together uh, if people are doing things in a similar way. I don't care if it's something simple. Go something simple, do something that's like so simple it's pleasing. You can look at doing hover effects, focus effects, you can do different types of animations when it comes out. You can do all sorts of different things with it to try and make it a pleasant and fun experience. These little interactions when we're dealing with the, the it's just one of the pieces of the puzzle, but it's one of those things that everybody on a site interacts with. If we can make that a little bit more pleasing, even if it's subtle, these little subtle things can really make a website just so much more fun. So, so how can you submit? There's two ways to submit, only two. Uh, one of them is you can try leaving a comment down below that has the link in it. Uh, that's not really the preferred method because it might get flagged as spam. But I'm going to allow it because I know not everyone's on Twitter. But the other way, I will, the best way to do it is on Twitter. Just put a link and hashtag it hamburger challenge. You can at me if you want to. It helps if you at me, but if you don't, I'm going to find them. Uh, once we hit the deadline, I'm going to look up the hamburger challenge hashtag. It is something, it's been used a little bit, but it's barely used for anything. So I'll, I'll easily be able to find all of the submissions and then I'm going to feature them. I'm going to show the world your work and we're going to look through them. We're going to see how things are done, especially if it's something really fun or creative. We might dive into them a little bit more and like look at the code and see how things were done. Um, I was, the code pen itself is set up to use SAS, so if you want to use SAS and nesting and do some fun stuff with that, you definitely can, but it's not a requirement. You, I didn't do any sassy stuff in there, you can just write regular CSS. All of that is fair game, but again, do not touch the HTML, that is the one rule. You can do anything you want in CSS, you can just rip the whole thing down, more or less. We want to keep them, you know, maybe not rip the whole thing down, but fair game, CSS is fair game. JavaScript, if you need to do something in there, go for it. Um, you know, if you want to get into some, some fun stuff in there, I don't know what you do, but it is also fair game. Just leave the HTML alone, so we're all working with the same structure at least. I am having to put a deadline on it, uh, and the most usually, I've only, I haven't done many challenges like this, but usually most of the submissions come right away, but I do want to give people time if, just in case you watch this over the weekend or something like that. Uh, the deadline will be next Wednesday. I don't even know the date for next Wednesday, and my phone, which I was gonna check my pocket, that's where my calendar is, I'm recording this on my phone. So that would be the 20th. So on the 20th, I am going to be looking at all those submissions and uh, making my video where I'm gonna be showcasing them and, and, and taking, you know, I'm gonna be making that video that day so it will not come out that day. Do you wanna expect the 20th to be seeing the submissions? That's when the deadline is. Probably be the week after that, once the video is finally out, maybe I'll try and get it in by the Friday, so 22nd, maybe. I'm really looking forward to what you guys put together for this. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun to see the different and exciting and fun things. Really try and think out of the box for some of it. Try and really push it. More than you do on a normal website is completely fine. Or again, if you want to do something simple and fun and just little details, that's cool too. Just throw whatever you got at me. If you want to do more than one submission, that's also, you know, for sure, why not? That's all, all good. 
So I look forward to seeing what you did. And until then, and until next time, or whatever, maybe you're going to watch another one of my videos right after this, whenever it is. Until then, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.